a lunar mission on the brink of collapse. NASA's ambitious Artemis program, plagued by delays and costing billions, is facing a critical moment. But a lifeline might exist in the most unexpected place. SpaceX. Is SpaceX the key to saving NASA's lunar dreams, or is it too late? NASA hesitates. The clock is ticking. This is TechMap, and we're diving in. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. As planned, we're just over a year away from NASA's Artemis II, which is scheduled to take place no earlier than April 2026. As the first crewed mission of the Artemis program, Artemis II will carry four astronauts on a venture around the moon. The 10-day flight will test NASA's foundational human deep space exploration capabilities, the SLS rocket, and the Orion spacecraft for the first time with astronauts. This mission is very important because it will pave the way to land the first woman on the moon on Artemis III. So how close is NASA to Artemis II? The space agency is actively preparing for this mission, despite rumors that SLS is set to be canceled under Trump's 2.0. That progress includes preparations of the rocket, spacecraft, and ground systems. Recent updates indicate significant progress in the assembly of the Space Launch System for this mission. In late January, Brad McCain, Deputy Program Manager for Ground Operations at Ground Systems Contractor Amentum, said that crews were currently stacking segments of the SLS's twin solid rocket boosters, a process that should be complete in the next two to three weeks. On February 18th, Teams with Exploration Ground Systems, a.k.a. EGS, stacked the left forward assembly of the solid rocket boosters. The forward assemblies are non-fueled sections that house avionics and motors and provide aerodynamics during flight. The integration of this assembly completes the stacking of the left booster. This follows the stack of the right forward segment, the tenth motor segment of the solid rocket boosters. The stacked segments are nearing their final height of 177 feet, or 54 meters tall. Once the vehicle is fully assembled, it will be rolled out to Launch Complex 39B for a tanking test. Charlie Blackwell Thompson, NASA Artemis Launch Director, released that the schedule for that tanking test is a little bit variable, but would be no earlier than the fall. Also, Artemis's team with NASA's EGS program at the agency's Kennedy Space Center in Florida successfully tested the new uninterruptible power supply for Mobile Launcher 1 while it's in Kennedy's Vehicle Assembly Building. This marks the next set of integrated ground systems testing the EGS teams are conducting to prepare for the Artemis 2 crewed mission. For those who don't know, the Artemis EGS program is located at Kennedy Space Center the launch site for the SLS rocket and its Orion spacecraft. EGS is also responsible for recovering the spacecraft after it splashes down in the Pacific Ocean. But the majority of its activities are at KSC. It is responsible for integrating SLS, the central core, the solid rocket boosters, the Orion spacecraft, and other components, moving it to the launch pad and sending it into space. As one of the most important components, the heat shield for the Orion spacecraft was installed on June 25, 2023, inside the high bay of the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. With the heat shield issue resolved, Matt Ramsey, Artemis II mission manager at NASA, said the key factors driving the launch date will be work assembling the vehicle. The recent progress toward Artemis II highlights the strong commitment of both NASA and contractors to maintaining NASA's current structure. However, it's not enough to fully eclipse the breaking scandals around this program, especially related to two elements, Orion and SLS. NASA flagship Artemis II mission has faced multiple delays since its inception. Initially planned for November 2024, it was then rescheduled to September 2025 and now to April 2026. This represents a significant delay of one year and five months from the original timeline. 
The delays are caused by technical issues including erosion of the heat shield on the Orion capsule, flown on the uncrewed Artemis 1 mission in 2022. The Orion spacecraft's heat shield experienced unexpected charring during the Artemis 1 mission due to trapped gas in the Avcoat material, leading to cracking. In addition, during Artemis 1, engineers used the skip guidance entry technique to return Orion to Earth. The technique, while providing flexibility, resulted in a period of reduced heating rates during re-entry, allowing thermal energy and gases to accumulate within the Avcoat. Ground testing hadn't fully replicated these lower heating rate conditions. These issues are very serious with more than 100 locations on the heat shield where material chipped away unexpectedly, raising high safety concerns. More importantly, NASA found itself stuck in a long period of uncertainty as it worked to determine the root cause of the heat shield failures. This has slowed the Orion spacecraft's heavy lift SLS rocket stacking at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In addition to the heat shield, NASA discovered problems with both the side hatch and valves in the life support system of the spacecraft. The side hatch needed to be assessed to ensure it could open under various conditions, while valves are designed to keep the crew alive inside the spacecraft. Although they passed testing for Artemis II, those valves failed during testing for the Artemis III mission due to design flaws. NASA engineers also noted deficiencies in the performance of Orion's batteries intended for use during emergencies when the spacecraft must separate from the rocket. When mentioning scandals in Artemis, can't help but mention the upgraded mobile launch tower for the moon rocket. And the name being criticized this time is NASA's Exploration Ground Systems Program, which made the ground systems needed to support the launch are behind schedule. Even though the ground systems were almost done, there was no extra time built into the schedule to handle any unexpected problems or delays. And of course, according to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, not only Artemis II but the next two Artemis missions also expected delay due to this poor management. This could be one of the reasons leading to the following delay of Artemis, 2 to April 2026. The existing Mobile Launcher 1, ML1, is used for the current version of SLS, Block 1, that launched Artemis 1 on an uncrewed test flight in 2022 and will be used for Artemis 2 and Artemis. During the Artemis 1 launch, ML1 sustained more damage than expected. The EGS program refurbished it and added other elements needed for Artemis 2. The extremely high cost per launch of a rocket is also a big matter, at around $2 billion. From its inception in 2011 through the year of its first flight, the Space Launch System Rocket Program has cost $23.8 billion. The Orion Deep Space Capsule has cost $20.4 billion since the program began in 2006. Related ground infrastructure upgrades cost an additional $5.7 billion since 2012. In total, NASA spent $49.9 billion on these programs between 2006 and their first test launch in 2022. Overall, high costs and delays are the two main reasons why pressure is being put on NASA to change the current Artemis approach. So, the concept of using SpaceX's vehicles as a low-cost alternative option has popped off online. We plan to use SpaceX's Crew Dragon for lunar missions. Crew Dragon has a dry weight of under 10 tons, and offers 50% more internal space than the Apollo capsule, which transported three astronauts to the moon, making it a potentially ideal choice. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket will launch Crew Dragon into lunar orbit, where it will dock with a lunar lander that will take the crew to the moon's surface, while Crew Dragon stays in low lunar orbit. After completing their scientific tasks, the crew will return to the lander which will then dock again with Crew Dragon for the trip back to Earth. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, launched on Falcon 9 rockets, has proven its docking capabilities, especially with the International Space Station. However, this solution has notable disadvantages regarding redesigning Dragon for the deep space mission and redesigning Falcon Heavy to be a human-rated vehicle. Another one is to use Starship as it could serve a dual role 
acting both as the launcher to deliver astronauts into lunar orbit and as the lander to carry them to the moon's surface. The Mega Rocket has the capability to handle an entire lunar mission independently, from Earth's orbit to the lunar surface and back. It can potentially take over Orion's role by transporting crews from low Earth orbit to the moon. A Dragon spacecraft could bring the crew to LEO, and Starship would complete the journey to the lunar surface and back. A key aspect of using Starship for lunar missions is its ability to maintain stable propellant levels while in lunar orbit. Refueling in LEO may also be required to maximize cargo capacity. However, Starship is still under development, although it is progressing. Waiting for it to come online may further delay the overall program. Additionally, shifting from the SLS Orion framework to Starship would require a revision of mission strategies and could potentially impact existing contracts and involve complex system accommodations. Starship is a fully reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle under development by SpaceX. It consists of two main components, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft. The combined vehicles standing at 398 feet, 121.3 meters, is the largest and heaviest rocket ever constructed with a launch weight of approximately 11 million pounds, 5 million kilograms, when fully fueled. Starship is designed to transport both crew and cargo to various destinations including Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. It is classified as a super heavy lift launch vehicle, capable of delivering over 50 metric tons to low Earth orbit. The super heavy booster is powered by 33 Raptor engines, while the upper stage is powered by six Raptor engines. These Raptor engines use liquid methane and liquid oxygen, methalox, as propellant, which is denser than hydrogen and allows for a more compact design. One of the key features of Starship is its full reusability. Both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft are designed to be recovered and reused after launch. This reusability aims to significantly reduce the cost of space travel, potentially to as low as $100 to $150 per kilogram to orbit. The primary goal of Starship is to facilitate a multiplanetary existence by making space travel more affordable. SpaceX envisions using Starship to establish a permanent human settlement on Mars. Starship is also intended for lunar missions, with a lunar variant proposed for NASA's Artemis program. Starship's unique capabilities and reusability have the potential to revolutionize space travel. Its large payload capacity and low cost per launch could enable a wide range of new missions, including large-scale satellite deployments deep space exploration, and the establishment of human settlements on other planets.